So hi everyone and welcome to this video on a continuation of our discussion in our module on decision making under uncertainty. And in this particular video, we're going to discuss a key concept uh, which we would need to understand when we proceed with our future lectures in financial economics, which would be all about dealing with uh, insurances. And as we know, insurances are things that we can use to potentially shield our investments from uh, risk. So we know that, of course, when we deal and invest in the financial markets, there is a degree of uncertainty that is there because generally returns are random. But there are certain financial instruments that one can use to mitigate the risk or potentially actually eliminate it altogether. And that's essentially the purpose of what we refer to as insurance policies. So um, in this particular video, we're going to sort of uh, derive how this insurance uh, scheme works and how it affects the consumer's behavior. And we're gonna uh, show it, uh, show this behavior as well uh, using an actual example using calculus. So it's gonna be a, a little bit of a long video, this one, but I hope you'll understand at the end of it, the importance of, and the theory behind showing this concept of insurances. Okay, so we will show uh, in this particular module that a risk averse individual will be willing to pay some amount of money to avoid in participating in any gamble at all. So for example, uh, a person was faced essentially with a, ga a gamble in life such that, for example, he or she purchases something very expensive. So say I buy a Rolex and unfortunately I'm not, uh, I'm not in a, I don't live in a good part of the town. Uh, I live in a town that has a good, uh, that has a high level of crime. And there's a chance that that, that Rolex watch may be stolen. So what I can do as a risk adverse individual is I can purchase probably some insurance for me to opt to not sort of participate in the gamble or at least shield me away from that gamble altogether or, or me uh, not getting a good payoff out of that gamble, i.e. it potentially being stolen, being lost or somewhat. Okay, so let's consider the case of a risk adverse individual with a level of current wealth, which is W0. Okay, so W0 is um, the initial level of wealth. And he or she faces a fair gamble. So that's 50-50. And he or she faces a chance of winning or losing H amounts of currency, so H amounts of pesos. So if W0 was the initial starting point, if the person wins the gamble, the person gets W0 plus H. If the person loses the gamble, he or she will get W0 minus H. So the wealth is subtracted. Then what we do is we plot that along the utility function, which we derived uh, in the past few videos. And we can show that um, this curve here is the utility function. And if we draw a line connecting these two points, okay, we, we draw a chord and this chord actually, okay, so that particular chord uh, we can plot that out if we plot in uh, our W0, which is essentially the expected value of our wealth. Because remember, when you have a fair gamble, the expected value of that is equal to, uh, of any gamble, is just going to be equal to your current level of wealth. Because the, the two forces, which is a win or a lose, will just cancel out each other. That expected value will be zero. So you're just going to be left with your current wealth. And you're just going to be left with that. So you plot that up and you get this point here. Then if you plot that, you will uh, eventually um, intersect a point along the utility function curve. And then if you plot that out, you will get this value, which is the expected utility of uh, W, right? Uh, note that the, um, the, if you evaluate it, of course, by Jensen's inequality, right? This is going to be the utility of expected wealth, right? And that, of course, is higher by, Jet, by Jensen's inequality. So just to recall from the previous video, by Jensen's inequality, okay, inequality, it should be that the utility of the expected wealth is greater than the expected utility of wealth. Okay, so that, that's that property. Then... What we're gonna point out in this video is that, notice I didn't plot it totally up. Okay, I plotted it to this level, which is the level of expected utility. And we will derive something here, which is WC. And WC is actually a very crucial concept to us. 
And it's something that informs how we view uh, risk. And it, it informs a lot about how we quantify risk. And this is essentially something that we would want to know when we're dealing with the concept of insurances. So let's go and dig in deep with that. So notice that there is a certain level of wealth, which we refer to as WC, which provides the same utility as participating in the gamble. So if you participated in the gamble, or uh, you will get the, so if you participated in the gamble, you get this utility, right? But this amount WC, okay, this amount WC, okay, also gives you that same utility. So there will be two utilities that we have, the expected utility of W and also the utility that we have when we evaluate the function with respect to WC or that what, whatever that current of wealth is. So WC, we can refer to this as what we call the certainty equivalent of his risky wealth. And we discussed this concept of a certainty equivalent before. So in essence, the individual would be willing to pay up to this level, which we will refer to as small pi. So pi is equal to the expected wealth, okay, the expected value of wealth less WC. And you're going to essentially know that since the expected value of wealth, you know, that's just going to be zero. So you're just going to be left with the initial wealth. This is going to reduce to W naught less WC. And this is the amount, so the pi represents this amount. It's the difference between W naught and WC. And the individual will be willing to pay up to this amount in order to avoid participating in the fair gamble. And note that this formula of, uh, of a premium only holds true for fair gambles. If the gamble is not fair, it doesn't hold true. Okay, so this particular formula underscores why people buy insurance a risk averse individual is willing to give up a small fraction of wealth. Right? If I were a risk averse individual, I would be willing to give up a small fraction of wealth such that I could potentially get a certain outcome. Right? Uh, this certain amount, which is the, cert, the what we refer to as an insurance premium, I pay that amount and, uh, and that amount paid can make me avoid the risky outcome. So it can ensure me against that risky outcome. And most risk averse individuals are willing to pay a small amount for insurance such that they are shielded against for, uh, the risky outcome. And, and that's logical behavior. So thus the insurance premium pi can be viewed as the certainty equivalent of the risky pay of Z that an individual is being insured against. Right? So it's a cert, it's some certainty equivalent. By certainty equivalent, it will, it's, like a, it's like a bribe to you. It's like a bribe that would make you indifferent between participating in the gamble and receiving that amount. Now, suppose the winnings from a fair bet are denoted by some random variable Z tilde. That Z tilde can either be the positive or the negative outcome. So for example, in the fair game, you could opt to win. Uh, you could potentially win plus H or lose minus H. But because the outcome is fair, right, the ex uh, because the game is fair or the bet is or the gamble is fair, then of course the expected value of that uh, of the outcome is equal to zero, right, by the properties we've been uh, that we've been positing so far. Then if that out if that bet is fair, then the size of the insurance premium pi that an individual with some current level of wealth W naught would make. Uh, th that particular level would make him exactly indifferent between taking the fair bet and paying uh, that amount, right? So what do we mean by this? Well, the expected utility of you participating in the gamble, right? And uh, it, assuming that we're dealing with a fair game here, so your wealth with the gamble is going to be equal to the expected utility that you have when you're just given sort of uh, an explicit certain outlay, right? And uh, that's the amount that you get. And that would be equal to essentially the utility function evaluated with your initial wealth, less uh, a small amount, which is pi or your insurance pre premium that you would be willing to pay to shield you against that risk, right? And the last equality holds because WC is received with a level of certainty, okay? so. This is something we'll posit with the example. 
Okay, so we're going to get these concepts when we deal with this example. So let's read it first. So suppose your money is defined over this utility function. Note, we use the same utility function we used before. And say that your current wealth, your, the total wealth that you have is 100,000, right? Then you face the prospect of a 25% chance of losing your, uh, your 20,000 peso necklace uh, through theft during uh, the duration of the year. Now, uh, you may be living in a bad neighborhood or something that this could happen. So suppose an insurance agent approaches you and offers, you to sell, uh, and offers to sell you some insurance policy. It's an insurance policy for the jewelry that you have, for the necklace that you have. And what it will do is if you purchase that, uh, that policy, uh, in case that that item is lost, right, uh, the, the insurance company will pay you back the entire worth of the necklace. Okay, so uh, offers a full coverage of the necklace, right? Now, that's pro uh, there are some insurances that do do that, that fully insure the item. There are some insurances that only insure, say, half the item, and those exist in the market too. So we have two distinct questions to ask. So the first one is, suppose the insurance company charges you a premium Okay, of 5,200. So say the policy, the insurance policy was worth 5,200. Would you be willing to buy that particular insurance policy or would you not be willing to buy it? Okay, so it's a question asking a risk averse individual, is that person going to buy the insurance or not? Second, something a key, if I worked in the insurance industry, this is something I would want to calculate. What is the maximum amount that the person would be willing to pay, this particular person would be willing to pay for full coverage, right? Uh, what's the maximum amount the person would be willing to pay for the policy? And these are key questions to ask. So le let's answer this now. Okay, so let me bring up a new paper here. Okay, so uh, let's answer the first question. Should I buy or should I not? So suppose the premium, right? So suppose the premium, the premium, premium is uh, 5,200 pesos, right? So if the premium is 5,200, okay, so we need to sort of picture two scenarios or two different, uh, two different like, yeah, scenarios. One wherein you purchased the insurance, one wherein you didn't. Okay, so uh, for example, say you don't purchase insurance. So you don't purchase insurance, purchase insurance. Okay, so let's set up, okay. So again, we have state, state S, probability, and then value of Z, right? Value of Z, okay. Um, then what will happen is uh, you can have one state of the world wherein you, uh, you lose the necklace. So you lose the necklace. And two is you don't lose the necklace, so not lose, okay? So, if that happens, okay, so say that, so if you recall from the definition earlier, the prospect that you lose the necklace is at 25%. So there's a 25% chance that you will lose the necklace, right? So the probability of you losing the necklace is 0.25. And of course, the probability of you not losing the necklace is 0.75. Now, if you lose the necklace, how much uh, does it cost, right? How much loss effectively does losing the necklace give you? Well, the, the loss is essentially equal to the value of the necklace, which in this case was negative 20,000, right? Now, it, go, go at it from the converse. What if you don't lose the necklace? So what value is that? Well, the value of that is zero, right? Because you already had the necklace. You didn't lose the necklace. So it, it's no pay up to you, right? You, you just remain with the necklace, right? So that's that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build, okay, so this is a PDF already. We're going to build that, build that, and add, okay, we're going to add the value of our wealth, right? The value of final wealth. So again, we have two states. So state one, when you lose, okay, two, not lose, okay, not lose, okay. So you have here 0 0.25, 0 0.75. This is the probability. Okay, that's the probability. Then the value of your final wealth, right? So remember, your, your wealth initially was 100,000, right? This is 100,000. 
and then say you lost the necklace, so that's minus 20,000. Therefore, the value of your final wealth is going to be 80,000. 80,000. Then, if you opted to not, uh, to not, uh, I, I'm sorry, if you didn't lose the necklace, so nothing changed. So your wealth is just 100,000 minus zero. That's just equal to 100,000. Okay, so that's what we have if you didn't buy the insurance. Now, what we're going to do is, you know, since we have a utility function, so since, okay, so since utility function, utility function, okay, function is, uh, remember that's u, w is equal to w raised to 0 0.5, we're going to plug in the value of final wealth to that function so that we can get the expected utility of wealth, right? So this one would be, uh, so we, again, we have state, yes, this is one where you lose it then to not lose, okay, not lose. Then again, you have the same probabilities, whoops. So you have probabilities. So that's 0 0.25, 0 0.75. Then the value of final wealth, this is equal to 80,000, then 100,000. Then if we plug that into utility, so utility, so we're gonna plug this in and this into the utility function. So we get 80,000, Okay, you raise to 0 0.5, then you get 100,000 raised to 0 0.5. Well, what do you get out of that? Uh, essentially, okay, um, you, this will be equal to some factor, this will be equal to some factor, but we're, we're interested in the expected utility of wealth, right? So, so the expected utility, the expected uh, utility of wealth, okay, without insurance okay so without insurance is this amount so that's gonna be uh expected utility of wealth no insurance no insurance this is equal to so just follow the formula 0.25 that's the probability times this utility value so that's eighty thousand raised to 0.5 plus uh, you have 0 0.75 times 100,000 raised to 0.5, right? And that's going to be leaving you, the expected utility of that wealth with no insurance, that's going to be equal to 307.8815 if you simplify that. Okay, so that's the expected utility when you do not have the insurance. Okay, so that's when you do not have the insurance. Now, we what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to use that as a vantage point and then see how that compares to if you had the insurance. To know first and foremost whether or not the person should buy the insurance, right? So let's calculate now with the insurance. So uh, I'll, I'll, write, I'll do it in color um, blue, okay? So say I purchase insurance, okay? I purchase insurance at um, at the price, which is 5,200, okay? So this one, we're gonna have a slightly different formulation. Okay, so state S, okay, so at one wherein I lose it, okay? And then two, I won't lose, so not lose, okay? So no loss, okay? Now, the probabilities remain the same. Probability is 0.25 that I lose it, 0.75 that I'm okay with it. Now. Let's have immediately the value of final wealth. Okay, so this is how we're going to formulate it. Let's start with the loose with the loose row because the loose row row is the most important one. So uh, remember, I started with a hundred thousand, right? That's my initial wealth. That's a hundred thousand. If the necklace is lost, I lose twenty thousand, right? I lose twenty thousand, right? Which is the value of the necklace. But okay, but okay. I also lost 5,200 because I chose to pay for the insurance. But because I have the insurance, the insurance company will give me back the entire amount of 20,000, right? So this is plus 20,000, right? Because if I'm in a state of the world wherein I lose the necklace, but I have the insurance, then the insurance company, assuming it's a full coverage insurance, uh, insurance like we have here in this example, will pay me back the entire amount. So the entire 20,000 will be paid back. 
Therefore, this entire thing is going to be 94,800 because right? these two things will cancel out. Then if I don't lose it, so that's just going to be 100,000, right? Minus 5,200. So remember, whether you lost or whether you lost the necklace or not, you paid for the insurance, right? So since the insurance is there to shield you against at risk, but it's also an explicit monetary outlay to you, whether or not you lost, whether or not you lost or you didn't lose the necklace. So this one will also be at 94,800, right? So that's 94,800. Therefore, right, you are guaranteed a wealth of 94,800, whether a loss occurs or not. So whether you lose the necklace or not, you're guaranteed 94,800. Therefore, right, the, when we calculate the expected utility of wealth with insurance, so with insurance, okay, this is just us evaluating this one, which is 94,800 raised to 0.5. Remember, the utility function is W raised to 0.5. And this is going to be equal to 307.8961. Okay, so notice, okay, the decimal, you know, these values are pretty close. Okay, so since, okay, so since uh, the expected utility of W uh, with insurance is equal to this one, 307.8961 is greater then the expected utility without insurance, note that this is 307.8815, which is equal to your expected utility of wealth with no insurance, then you will prefer, okay, we will prefer to insure the necklace, the necklace for 5,200. So, Oh, if the question just posits, would you or would you not buy the insurance? In this case, since you're exp the expected utility you derive from uh, with the insurance is greater than without the insurance, then you should opt to buy the insurance, right? So that's the conclusion we have there. So the second question is, okay, so that, that answers the first one. The second question is, what, okay, what is the maximum what is the maximum amount okay, I would pay, pay for the insurance? So what is the maximum amount I'm willing to pay for the insurance, for the insurance, okay? So how do I answer this? Well, in essence, the maximum amount, the max amount, right? The max amount I would be willing to pay I would be willing to pay is such that my expected utility uh, of wealth with insurance is equal to my expected utility of wealth without insurance, right? In essence, I'm trying to get at an indifference point, something where I am indifferent between these two quantities, these two expected utilities, which is exactly the point that um, we were discussing earlier back in the graph. Right? It's a point that will make you indifferent between you face the gamble or you, or you don't, right? So that is, okay, uh, that, that is, okay, that is, you are as well off as you would be, would be, if forced, if forced to pay, forced to pay, okay, I'm sorry, forced to face, forced to face the world without insurance, right? So that's essentially the story insurance. So that's the story behind it. So let's build out our PDF, okay? So the PDF is just going to be equal to C so have state, okay, state. So one again, you lose it. Okay. Two, not lose. Okay, not lose it. Probability does uh, stays the same. This is 0.25. This is 0.75. Then this is value of final wealth, right? With insurance. Okay, so with insurance. 
Now, we don't know what that insurance is. We'd like to find out what that maximum value is. So that's what we're gonna find out. Okay, we're gonna uh, we're going to sort of substitute an arbitrary value. I'm sorry, we're not gonna substitute. We're gonna define some arbitrary value and try to solve for that value. So this is how it goes. So remember, if I if I'm in a state where I lose the necklace, so my initial wealth is a hundred thousand. Then since I buy the insurance, I deduct the amount of the insurance policy, right? That's something that's pi. Then uh, since I lose the, I lose the necklace, I lose 20,000. But since I purchased the insurance for that amount pi, I gain that back, right? So that goes back to me, right? So that's 20,000. So this one is going to be equal to 100,000 minus pi. Then the same is true if I don't lose the necklace. So it's just going to be 100,000, right? Minus the amount I paid for the insurance, which is pi. So I have the same whether I lose it or not. Thus, with this insurance policy, you are guaranteed, again, a certain wealth of 100 minus pi. So notice it's the same whether or not you are in an environment where you lose or not lose it. So in essence, all we have to do is just evaluate it okay, to the utility function, but remember the amount that we calculated for the expected utility of wealth without insurance. So if you recall, so recall from this part here, okay, the expected utility of final wealth without insurance is this much. So that's the expected utility of wealth with no insurance is equal to 307.8815. So that's equal to that. Then what, what will happen is, okay, uh, I'm going to use that particular value. I'm going to use that value and uh, if, if, uh, you know, put it in an uh, ex equation when I'm, I'm equaling these two such that I can solve for pi. Again, my goal is to be able to get the maximum insurance. So th this, is, this would essentially be the point we're in. The two uh, expected utilities with insurance and without insurance would be equal to each other. So to do that is just simple. Okay, so the, um, so I'm gonna do expected utility with uh, no insurance. Remember, should be equal to the expected utility with insurance, right? So remember, we're just appealing to this um, assertion I made earlier, and your expected utility with the insurance. Okay, so this one here, this is gonna be equal to essentially one hundred thousand minus pi raised to 0 0.5, right? So that's going to be that. So I'm going to be left with a form trying to solve. So this is going to be 100,000 minus, I'm sorry, whoops, minus pi raised to 0 0.5 is going to be equal to uh, 307.8815. Okay, so how do I simplify it? Well, um, uh, what I can do is I can square both sides so that I can take this out. So if I do that and I square that, I'm going to be left with 100,000 minus pi is equal to, so it's going to be 100,000 minus pi is equal to 307.8815 squared. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, subtract, okay, so it's going to be pi, which is equal to 100,000 100,000 minus 307.8815 squared. And if I do that, pi is going to be equal to 5208.95. So that's going to be that. Therefore, okay, uh, I would okay, be willing to pay a maximum of 5,208.98 pesos to ensure against the risky outcome, which is my necklace being stolen. So I hope you're able to see the concepts of how insurance factors in financial economics through this particular video. And uh, thank you for sticking along in this relatively long video. And I'll see you in the next video when we start to discuss uh, measures of risk aversion. How exactly do we measure risk aversion? So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.